In today's video, we're going to be playing some Madden NFL 16 Draft Champions, and we're hoping that this Inside the Mind gameplay video will help you get better at Madden NFL 16 as we prepare uh, for some tournament play here. For those of you guys that are new to my YouTube channel, I want to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Cody, and our channel here really is geared to try to help foster a community that makes one another better at the game of Madden NFL 16. And I see that Draft Champions is obviously one of the, you know, one of the places that the game is starting to shift more towards. And so, you know, this rest of the year for the Inside the Mind gameplays, we're going to be trying to do a lot of those gameplays from Draft Champions because we see that as where the competitive community is uh, is going to be heading. So, with that in mind, uh, that's what we're doing today. Uh, my draft, I am rocking with the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive playbook. And now the interesting thing about the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive book is um, that they do have that fullback inside. They have the shotgun split close, all the favorites from there. And uh, that's what we're probably going to focus on for the majority of the day uh, of the game today. And we're just going to be working this split close and doing the best we can to, to really try to make this work for us. Um, it does have the shotgun bunch, which is another formation that I'm very familiar with, and I really enjoy this one. And it has a pretty some pretty good plays here. Not the best shotgun bunch because the quick audibles kind of are not very good, but it does have that. Uh, but from my experience, guys, uh, this is one of the worst playbook draws I've had. It actually is the worst playbook draw I had by far ever in draft champions and um, you know that's kind of the uh, that's kind of where we're coming from uh, my draft was really bad I, I've had bad drafts before but you know this bad draft terrible I mean this may have been the worst draft I've ever had uh, I have a decent offense but I don't have a quarterback uh, so I'm rocking with the silver Matt Schaub and the interesting thing about the Steelers playbook is that it doesn't have a ton of inside zones. As you can see, my legend is Emmett Smith, and so we're utilizing him. You can see there's Matt Schaub overthrowing someone. So that's unfortunate. Let's see if the doubles. So the Steelers playbook does have some inside zone. I've never used the Steelers playbook before. I'm just. I labbed it, uh, took some notes from it, but never really used it. And that's what makes Draft Champions such a hard game mode, in my opinion, because like you, some of these playbooks, like you know, I would have never picked. Like I never would have picked. Uh, all three playbooks I had were three, four base playbooks, and there you see Matt Schaub just really killing me with that huge overthrow. So he's got this Reggie Nelson card. And then defensively, we didn't really get a great draft either. I've got a pretty good defensive lineup for the 3-4 even. But, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. I got really good, I got a really good base defense, I feel like, because I got some players that can do a little bit of everything. Or Casey Hayward stays with Brian Finneran. Um, I'm kind of set up to run uh, heavy zone coverage. I've got some guys. i got two base cards that can play man really well. Uh, the only problem with them So right there, you know, I'm just running some basic pressure from the mic scrape. Uh, I've never really used the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook on defense before. So this is huge. They have the dime one for six. I have a really, really good, like, defensive line. But the problem with my defensive line is that, like, they're set up for a 3-4 base. Uh, just because that was kind of how the, the thing went, really. So I don't have a ton of, like, really, really good linebackers. So I'm going to have to work with what I have here. I'm thinking of putting Demarcus Lawrence is going to go here. 
but you can't you see that's part of the problem with the dime one four six normally guys can't handle two man under so we're gonna just rock that for most of the game there's some playmaking and he somehow gets him open but we get a nice fumble from Kenny Phillips and he out of five of my players he freaking picks that up that's so frustrating but the cool part about what I did find was that I had some decent user players and I had some really really good base corners so I didn't especially for man coverage like for diamond stuff so I didn't I don't even know who I, I it's like I just couldn't pick anybody because like I just got an awful draft like this is I feel like the draft like even though it doesn't matter a hundred percent it definitely still matters like this rollout with the quarterback is lethal that should have been a fumble oh my gosh that should have totally been a fumble right there so I am familiar with this 3-4 solid, so that'll be a good defense for like the red zone. Because I can run it fairly well. Pick. Oh my gosh. Uh. So Matt Schaub, I mean, pretty much scripted exactly how that would go. Matt Shaw, bad throw. I think three of them. Pittsburgh Steelers don't have a really good running set. I should have probably gone. I can't remember exactly the playbooks I had option. I think I had Denver. I had Denver. I had, um, obviously I had Denver and Pittsburgh. And then I had one other one, but it was a 3-4. And it was, I, it wasn't Houston. I just can't remember what it was off the top of my head. See, there's no gun ace. Like, there's no... Like, there's this gun trio. Which I, you could do a little bit with it, but it doesn't even have an inside zone. See, the doubles, like, you have to come out in the inside. Yeah, this is a... Steelers play because kind of sucks and this dude's got like a legit defense man he's got he's got some studs my offense is really good I feel like at the skill position so we'll be fine with beating man but we just don't have anything for like I don't think I have single back bunch jeez So there you run commits. We're able to hit a dot. But yeah, I don't really have a whole lot. So this is going to be kind of like how to win with nothing on offense. Like, I have this iPhone Pro Twins. So I'm going to have to just... See, I have the fullback dive and halfback toss. I mean, I'm going to have to just do this. I mean, this is going to be my offense. Is this iPhone Pro Twins. I think I've kind of found my groove now so we're gonna have to really work this formation they don't really have anything else that's legend Emmett Smith man I've been talking him up man how much I wanted one and I finally get one and just can't use them I don't have anything good so I should have probably gone with that third playbook but I can't remember exactly what it was like it wasn't a good one I just can't, it was a 3-4 base, it wasn't like a Green Bay or something like that where like you could really utilize it, it was just one of those basic books and it wasn't very good, like, I know that for a fact, otherwise I would have definitely picked it because this playbook is terrible, there's some pressure, so as we can see, I mean the mic scrape, the, the reason that it's so good in my opinion is mainly just because you can pretty much call it 
against anything. I mean, the cool part about it is just that you're, you know, you if you have those decent zone covering corners, which we have pretty good zone corners, you're going to be okay because the pressure is, if it, if it itself is not, you know, it's not great or anything. It's just like the thing that it's going to do is it's going to give you a base to play some defense out of a 3-4. Because, like, we just – we don't really have any. You know, I mean, we've got Damon Harrison, Chris Long. So I have, like, a really good defense for this 3-4 Mike Scrape. So it's like one of those things where, like, even though I don't really normally run the Mike Scrape D, um, it's just kind of one of those situations where you have to play to your strength. And my only strength is this 3-4. Hope he doesn't rocket catch on me like that. And like my corners are decent. Like I've got brand I've drafted two. I've drafted two corners, a safety. And they all have high zone coverage. Like upper eighties to ninety. They don't have very good speed though, so that's what again another reason why this Mike Scrape is a really good defense. The Dime one four six will work really well because my base corners, I have two guys that in my base set of corners that cover really well. So I'll be able to definitely utilize them. I also got this David Johnson roll to the playoffs card. So I can run like fullback dies with him. So this isn't going to be too bad. We'll just have to see how it goes. And Emmett Smith has got no running room. Matt Schaub throws a dot right there. Um, just a see, we don't have we don't even have that. Man, this playbook is terrible. I got we're gonna have to go ace pair flex. I forgot about this. They do have this formation. I forgot about this, guys. All right, so this ace pair flex. The reason that it's really good is because you have like some really cute little quick pass things you can do. The quick audibles are pretty good from it. Uh, you may you may be familiar with Young Nephew. He was in the Madden Challenge, and he ran this formation and ran it pretty well. So that's what we're going to have to do from Pittsburgh. So, you know, honestly, it's not a terrible playbook, I guess. And we have this bunt. So we do have this bunch base that we can use. So now it's starting to come together a little bit. So we're not going to be completely hopeless. Uh, we're just going to be definitely not going to be as good as we could be. But we do have, you know, some creative things that we don't normally run, you know, single back bunch, ace. Like, we haven't ran that in forever. Uh, but it was one of our starter schemes from Arizona that we liked. We can't run on this guy, man. This dude's run defense is legit. He brings the house on you. So definitely have some options. That ace pair flex is going to be something we can use uh, because it utilizes, like, the zone running scheme. That's the same kind of basic thing the inside zone is. I mean, it's not... 100% the same, but it is definitely similar. Um, as far as, like, defensively, we're just going to go in between the Mike Scrape 3 and the Dime 146 cover 2 man. Yeah. So he sets up a little screen to the running back. He's got a pretty good offense. He's got Joe Flacco. He's got uh, Lamar Miller. He picks up the pressure, throws a dot on the run, man. He's like, this Joe Flacco card is looking legit right now. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So he goes a little wide receiver screen, playmakers in, we're right. That's so frustrating. So right there, like. That's a classic example of you just blew it. Like, literally, that's all I could say right there. We drafted. I thought we drafted. A, we got Roby here, McDougal. I 
I can't hot rock anybody. And there, Woodard, Woodard makes a great play. So we got to get McDougald in the game. This guy Bradley McDougald. And this guy Tremaine Johnson. Hayward. There we go. So normally in like obvious passing situations, like if they, I'll start them with a two man under. Most people won't be able to beat that. As you can see, I mean, especially in draft champions, you just really, like you need really good route running to beat man and most people won't have it. There's some pressure, um, and that's like what guys like Vic, Vic Beasley and those guys like. This is what they'll do for you is they'll be able to sometimes just get pressure, and I feel really confident like in our ability to like sit back and rush the passer in the dime one four six. The only real thing, I mean, this will probably be the defense that will end up, you know, clamping down. It's just this defense is really designed. And there we see we get a stop. But this defense is not something that I'm going to feel confident if my opponent, you know, really comes out with a nice offense. I probably will have a lot of trouble. But we get the ball back here. We have an opportunity to maybe make something happen. He's got some really, really heavy run defense. So I'm trying to see if I can find some runs. But there's really nothing. He's been really, really stout in his run defense. Matt Schaub can't really throw that well. So that's hurting me a little bit. He has to be, you have to be really, really crisp with Schaub and set your feet and make sure that you're, you know, you're really kind of taking your time almost to make throws. On the bright side, I did get some really good players, though. I just took a big sack. So I feel like I've been taking a lot of big sacks lately. But um, I have really good receivers. Like Matthews, Bruce, Cameron, Norwood, like they'll all be really good for beating man-to-man. -man. So that's a plus. He's been using that running back, so I checked down here to Emmett Smith. I'm trying to get my legend the ball somehow, some way, somehow. And uh, we're able to pick up some yardage. Uh, so third and 11, this is a big down for the offense. I'm just trying to get a field goal mainly. Uh, obviously, ideally, I get more than that. Here, Matt Schaub threads the needle to Isaac Bruce with a pass lead up out of the PA post play. Makes it a very good little route. So it comes out too high. Goes, goes with some pressure. Emmett Smith is wide open, and Schaub just misses him. That's why you cannot pass lead with bad quarterbacks. There I tried to pass lead it with Schaub, and as you saw right there, Schaub overthrew it. That's something that you have to really think about when you have you know, your draft team and really your personnel more so than anything. You know, Sometimes that personnel, I mean, if you don't have you know, really, really good a really really good arm you cannot you cannot pass lead things so here we go back with a base no pass lead and we get in the end zone for six and that's a really big score for the offense um, and so now we have an opportunity as an offense to check down into the single back bunch and this is something I'm really comfortable with as you see we have some pretty good audibles from here and here we check down to Jordan Mateus and unfortunately Jordan Mateus does not catch it so really at this point this is a really good position to be in though up to going into half I'm pretty sure that he's going to go ahead and come out of half with the ball so you know we have to kind of keep everything in front of us here cannot give up a touchdown can't even give up a field goal right here this is a really critical down um, a really critical time for the uh, defense so this is all two men under me in the middle of the field, forcing him, and very first play, he gets a 50-yard dot, a 30-yard dot. 
to Brian Finneran. So I have Roby, all of my players. So there's a little stick and waggle. Goes up top. We're playing the ball all the way here, and we we're going to be able to make that play because we have two men under coverage, two people in the area. Puts him in a situation where he is now in fourth and long, and we're able to go to quarter. Man up three deep here. He's in a Hail Mary situation. He cannot possibly get the field goal. Defense just accomplished their job if they can get off the field right here. Rolls out with the quarterback once again, and we're just going to play the receiver there. Brandon Flowers makes the interception. And we're going to go into half up two scores. That was a huge stand there by the defense after allowing that 30-yard dot right off the bat on that drive. Uh, as a defense, you know, your primary concern, especially when you don't have a really dominating playbook or, or team, really, for that matter, you have to be concerned with bend but don't break style defense. You know, not every defense is going to just come out and just shut everybody out. It's all about picking and choosing your spots, in my opinion, this season. And uh, it really forces you to play defense differently. So here's some playmaking. He catches it, and we're right there to make the tackle. Just don't have anyone really to put. We're going to try to sub in the guy that we drafted there, but I don't really think he's going to be able to cover him either. And... Uh, but it's all it's all two men under until he shows me, you know, he can consistently beat it for many many yards. And their flower gets dotted, and, but the thing is, like, when I'm that close, I'm okay with that because normally that's not going to be a consistent completion, so I'm okay with him forcing that in. Occasionally, what you'll see me do is you'll see me send some pressure, and that's what I'm going to do here. Let's send some pressure out of a cover two. Stops the rollout because he's been rolling. Man, Brian Finneran. Brian Finneran came to play. All right, so I'm going to examine the lineup here. Eh, it doesn't really matter. So this is a big... He's going like a fake spike. Crossing patterns. We have a guy in the vicinity, and we make the play. It's a big stop by the defense. It keeps it, him at bay. And offensively now, this is a really big drive. In my opinion, there's always critical points within the game. And uh, this is one of them. We don't start out well with Theo Rigg dropping the ball. But now, this is where the offense really... I mean, we're not in the bunch here. We're in the ace pair flex. And this is where we really have got to make our make our presence known. I mean, this is a key drive for the offense. Gives me the read for the run. Off tackle, Emmett Smith almost breaks it. He has not had a great game. Schaub throws a dot to Jordan Mateus, and Jordan Mateus makes up for dropping the two-point conversion, goes 80 yards to the end zone, untouched, read a cover two defense out of the break, and we were able to make the throw. Matt Schaub coming up big for the offense for sure this game, and uh, definitely, definitely looking solid. Here we're going to flip the quick pitch, try to run it off the back edge. Um, you guys may remember that from some of my earlier videos this season. Emmett Smith is able to power his way into the end zone, and we're able to go up 13 points. Defense now has the opportunity to pin its ears back, rush the quarterback, keep everything in front of it, no big plays, two men under style defense. Pretty much what you're going to see for the rest of the game from me. You hear me talk about it a lot, but in Draft Champions, it's a game mode where literally if you can get a couple of one, one or two stops 
on defense and you have a really pretty solid offense, you're going to win almost every game you play. So the key is not about having you know, solid, intimidating pressure or whatever it may be. The key is really just about, and you see this guy's doing some really unique things with his playmaker. And he's playmaking players to, you know, stay on their routes or whatever. But, you know, I mean, what you're seeing right now, this is classic defense, especially when you're winning uh, in this situation. I mean, this is where we're at. And he's going to roll out with Fluco. I'm okay at this point this season with quarterback rollouts, quarterback keepers, because, like, yeah, I mean, he's gonna he's doing fine right now, but the idea, we're going to pass him it here. What's the safety from D? That's not good. And there you see there's the quarterback contained on the very next play. I mean, we've kind of played a little cat and mouse game with him all game, uh, really revolving. Really revolving around his attempts to roll out with the quarterback. And there we see a crossing pattern. But it's like what you're seeing here. I mean, he's 12. You see how the two men under coverage really makes it difficult. Uh, and what we like to do here is we like to go to zone coverage at very strategic times. And we think that makes it worth our while. Here we go to roll coverage technique. Safety comes over the top in the four verticals. We're able to make the play. It's fourth and 18. This is where two men under, you would say, two men under make your money. Goes to the tight end. On his route, goes one-on-one -on -one up top. We're able to make the play. The defense makes a huge stand, and he looks like he is about to quit out. But that is how you win with nothing on your playbooks. You play two men under, you blitz in certain situations, but overall, you lock up. That's how we win the game, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and if you are looking to improve more, check out